It's been another fantastic sewing marathon for me, but my machine has certainly seen some fiber. It's time to get it all cleaned out. And I thought, what a great way to present to all of you good troubleshooting knowledge and maintenance knowledge on drop and bobbin machines. Let's get started. So as you can see, nice and close here, I've got a bit of a mess inside of my machine. Now, of course, you know I'm goofing off a little bit, but I have literally taken my machine apart before, and especially sergers, and seen this kind of mess. There's a few major things that will happen, especially with drop-in bobbin machines, and the first one is, too much fuzz down in your stitch plate area, your feed dog area, your bobbin area. So one of the things I do is I always remove my stitch plate and I'm gonna caution you right now, you should always do this with the power off on your sewing machine, but today I've got the power on on my machine because I'm using the lighting so that you can see better a little bit. So power off on the machine and of course you'd also have your needle out of your sewing machine, but I need the needle to point out some of the things for timing issues. So. I'm doing a few things a little different than I want you to do. So here we are down in that drop and bobbin area. And the first thing I do is I don't use a can of spray air to clean this out. I use my hands and I remove as much of the fuzz from the bobbin area as possible. I get all that out of the way first. Then what I wanna do is I wanna take my bobbin itself out. And if you've never done this, your instruction manual will show you not only how to remove the stitch plate and any extra cover plates, but we'll also talk about this drop and bobbin itself. So this black drop and bobbin piece, we're gonna maintenance and talk about putting it back in in a few minutes. But the first thing I do is I remove it is I just take my brush and I start cleaning off all of the little areas. Now with a drop and bobbin, a lot of times there's gonna be a piece of Velcro fuzz or wool or something along that area. That helps our threads glide. So not all of this is fuzz that needs to be removed. So don't chip away at that with a, an old butter knife or something. I also clean this all the way out. And at this moment, let's talk about a couple of troubleshooting things. So I'm gonna do maintenance and troubleshooting hand in hand today. One of the things that happens often, if you get a thread jam with a drop and bobbin machine, the drop and bobbin itself can keep spinning as the machine is jamming up. And you'll actually take your needle and you'll pierce with a needle, pierce, 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 pierce with your sewing needle through there that will start to cause some erratic looking stitches in your straight stitching. You'll see an occasional weird funky stitch on the back and things. And a lot of times that's because that little barb that was formed as the needle pierced through that bobbin case is catching on the threads. The other thing is, is this bottom lip rides inside on the track of what we call the race or the bobbin area. And if there are piercings through there, it can float and wobble and make a bunch more noise and just become less accurate. So if you've struck your bobbin case with a needle, you can take your thumbnail a lot of times and like push that plastic back into place. And if it works, you fixed it. If not, we need to get you out there and we need to replace that bobbin case. So that's one of the troubleshooting things that happens with drop-in bobbins often. Now that I've got that bobbin case out of the way, I'm gonna come in here with a brush and I'm gonna to continue to brush away the fiber and the lint out of here. Now, the stuff that you're seeing now is real fuzz. This is not prop fuzz from the props department. This is the real stuff coming out. And a place that we get a lot of fuzz that builds up is in our feed dogs, right in here. Now, whether that's drop-in bobbin or regular bobbin machines, cleaning out your feed dogs makes a great help especially if your stitch length is not real regular. It means your feed's not going real well. So I'm gonna go out in here and I'm actually going, always I dust before I do any oiling. And I'm dusting through here and I'm dusting through here and I wanna point out a couple of more things, okay? So come in real close here. First of all, this metal ring is a magnet, as a matter of fact. And that magnet will help you with the metal portion of that drop and bobbin case, it helps it sit in here properly, which I will tell you how to set it in here properly in a second, because I'm not doing it right. Oops. What I'm trying to point out is how that metal holds it in there securely. So if you get too much fuzz between that magnet, and that's the first place that the fuzz builds up, that's going to cause that magnet to break its contact, and it's not going to be able to hang on to that metal base of the bobbin case and that helps it not float around. This magnet, a lot of machines, it will just pop right out as well. So be careful while you're dusting in here that you don't knock your magnet out of place. 
This machine does not have a wick right here, although a lot of drop and bobbin machines I meet will have a wick right in here. You'll see a square cutaway, and it looks like fuzz or lint, but it's not. It's a long little wick that you would put a couple of little drops of oil on there about every 30 days. Okay, I see one more little piece of fuzz I want to get out of here before I start talking about putting it all back together. Now there's a lot of other parts in here you could talk about maintenancing, but we just wanted to talk about the drop in bobbin today. Oops, I just want that one little pat last piece of fuzz. Now at this point, if you had a can of sprayer, you could hit it one or two little blasts because the cover's open and a lot of that fuzz is out of there. I still don't love it. At home, I use a real air compressor because it doesn't have moisture in it. And that's when I come through here with an air compressor and I blast all of the rest of the little fibers out of the way. Now, I will often use a drop of oil and I'll either put it right here. This is the race or this is the lip that the black bobbin case is gonna sit on. So you can either put a drop of oil right there if that's easy for you, but the other thing you can always do is you can just flip your bobbin case over and you can put a drop of oil right here on the underside out on that edge. And then as this seats back into the machine, that drop of oil is gonna be there. Some manufacturers do not want you to oil your machine. This is something I do often and these bobbin cases, yes, they are plastic, but they're also fairly inexpensive. I think that's where the debate lies is whether the oil will wear it out. I haven't seen it be problematic yet. Okay, now this is really important. As we come in here, this opening, the upper edge of the bobbin case is gonna line up square to these feed dogs. So I'm gonna come in here and try to slip it in and then I'm gonna point out the other two things I'm looking for. Okay, that went in nice and smooth. That's how I want it to fit, just like that. Now you can see along this edge, it is now seated perfectly within the race. And then most drop and bobbin machines will have one piece right here, which is called the position finger. It's a little spring that allows for our thread to come through here. So you wanna make sure that that spring is still activatable. So that would be another troubleshooting thing. If your threads are getting stuck as they come through, make sure there's not something caught on here, as well as make sure that this nub is on the spring side a lot of times they'll get stuck over here. This machine has a white mark to match up those two areas. And then a lot of times on the back side of the bobbin covers will be another tab that will actually help hold in all of the working parts. So all of this may not be completely secured until we have the rest of our stitch plate down. Okay, so I just wanna make sure that's lined up. It's nice and square. We wanna make sure we do not pierce through that with a needle. I would always put in a fresh needle while I'm doing maintenance. Of course, you know I love my Microtex Sharps needles. They work fantastically, right? And then there's one last thing I wanna point out, really important when it comes to the screws within the needle plate itself. These screws are not real easily found at the hardware store. And a lot of times the screws are gonna either have on this head it's gonna have this beveled, like this triangle angle to it, or this one has an additional little lip. So when you start to put your stitch plates back onto the machine, what you're gonna do is you're gonna slightly drop these into place, and you're just gonna finger tighten them at first. The way the heads of the screws are set up is it helps bring that stitch plate right in so that it lines up with your feed dogs. Now, as I bring it over to the machine to show you that, I'm gonna turn the lights off on the machine because this machine's got a safety feature and it's gonna start beeping and making all kinds of noise. Okay, so I'm just gonna kill the lights, but now you've been able to see the bobbin case. Now as I bring this around, okay, what I'm trying to say is I wanna make sure this lines up within the feed dogs. And then I bring these screws in and I finger tighten them to make sure they go in correctly. If it takes any force, that means that your threads are not lining up correctly. And if you're looking around in your toolkit that came with your machine, you might be looking for something that looks like this as a screwdriver, but funny enough, a lot of the new machines have this little wonderful tool like here. It's a little bit larger than a quarter, and that part down there is a screwdriver. So you can use that to come in here like yay and tighten that up. And now that that's on, I can turn the light back on my machine because I put the screw in to keep the beep from happening, right? And what I want to point out lastly is these screws are still sitting in here pretty nice and loose and I put them both down at the same time to make sure that the feed dogs are in line with the stitch plate 
And I wish I had two little fingers that fit in here, but I don't. Sometimes you can come out here with a little larger screwdriver. Nope, I'm going to use this one. <laughs> it always seems so much easier when you're all not watching me. That's all right. I love the fact that you're watching me out there because if you weren't watching me, I wouldn't get to do this kind of stuff. There we go. Okay, so now that one is secure. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to re-secure that one. Everything's fantastic. And then the last thing I would go ahead and do is lock in the rest of my stitch plate. Like I said, I'm going to put in a fresh needle and this machine should be ready to rock and roll for another good 30 to 60 days worth of sewing, except for that needle. A fresh needle at the beginning of every project will make your sewing as awesome as it always is right here at Man Sewing. Mm -hmm.